We are going to be talking about four numerical methods, finite difference, finite volume, finite element, and boundary element methods. So I'm not worried about any of you confused between these three and boundary element methods because it's so different from these three. But I do want to show you the difference between finite difference, finite volume, and finite element. They are the same in the sense that they approximate any function. And in this case, we are only going to be talking about spatial functions, any functions of space, as a f using a finite number of quantities. I mean, if you think of it, how many quantities do you have, do you have to have to really represent a function? The answer is infinite, right? So, I mean, no matter how many things you use to describe a function, it's, it's not going to be enough to be able to represent our functions. You'll be missing something. So all of this, therefore, has to make approximations. Otherwise, you can't represent arbitrary functions. right? So, so all of this involves approximation to arbitrary functions using finite number of numbers, because computers can only deal with finite number of numbers. But they define how they do the approximation. So here I have some demos. Uh, close all. So first of all, I'm going to show you a finite difference demo. OK. A finite difference, this is a demo of approximating a function of x, where x goes from 0 to 1, using a finite number of numbers. Uh, somebody come up and draw me a function you want to approximate, an arbitrary function. Please? Yeah. Any function you want to approximate. All right, thank you. So, what's your name? Burke. Burke has drawn a function. And uh, he actually <laughs> made the function do something very cool here. And we can see the approximation made. So the approximation are the solid red circles on the grid of spacing point one. OK. So we are going to see that it's an approximation because actually the cool stuff Burke has drawn is completely missed right, by the approximation. The computer only stores what? The approximate values or the exact values? The, fun the computer actually stores the exact values of the function, but only at a finite number of axes. These finite number of axes are called the grid points, right? So for any finite difference method, we need a grid. And uh, the computer only stores the value of the function at these grids, nothing else. <laughs> that is finite difference, OK? So uh, let me just uh, draw this. So let's say you have an arbitrary function. <laughs> The computer only stores the function here, 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 here. Anything else is forgotten, all right? Has no effect. So this is finite difference. And then we need to approximate all the differential operators, like partial, partial u, partial x, partial square u, partial x square, using only this information, using only the information of the function at these axes. As you're going to see, sometimes we'll make horrible errors in doing this approximation. It's not, not avoidable. But we'll have a way to analyze how much error we're making and how much that error affects the accuracy of our solution. So before I go on, let me show you uh, the difference by showing if somebody come up and draw another function, I will show you how finite volume approximates that function differently from finite difference. OK. Yes, please. Thank you. What's your name? Renee. Renee. OK, please. Oh, cool. I 
like that. <laughs> Thank you. So this function is then approximated by finite void, not finite difference. And how is it different? What does finite void mean? Can somebody tell from this? I mean the volume of the resting home and the resting house. And then across the volume of the interval of the straight line would be the same as the interval of the curve through the boundary, the real function. Right, so you also is that the integral of these straight lines are the same as the integral of the actual functions, which means the, the value of the straight lines are what of this what of this function over these cells or volumes? Uh, average. average, exactly. So, so the finite volume only stores the average of the function over individual volumes. So instead of a, a, a grid, I mean, fi finite volume cannot just work with a grid. It needs to work with a partition of unity of the space, right? So for any domain you have, you need to give the domain a partition of unity. The smaller this, I mean, this each each partition is called a, a cell or volume, in finite volume, and uh, the computer stores the averages there. And you see, the computer does not know the value of the function at any particular point, right? If you ask the function, okay, what is the value of this function at this grid point, the computer doesn't even know. The computer only knows the volume averages. So, and again, in final volume, we have to approximate all the differential operators using knowledge of only these volume averages. Right, so as you can imagine, the kind of approximations we have to make is different. And the final volume is going to be different, it's going to be good for a different set of scenarios. For example, if there are shock waves, final difference is going to be pretty horrible, and final volume is going to do pretty well. And we are going to see later on. Third type of thing is a, a finite element. Oh, I didn't even have it here. Okay, uh, I, I'll, maybe I'll show you later when we get to finite element. But like in a nutshell, what finite element does is that it neither stores the values nor the averages. It specifies a class of functions that are very limited in what it can do. So instead of saying I want to approximate any function, it specifies only a limited class of functions. For example, piecewise linear functions, right, over several pieces. And then, if I give you an arbitrary function, it tries to find within the class of functions what is the closest one to the function you gave me. So that's finite element. They are different from either finite volume or finite difference. But we'll be talking about that uh, a little bit later in the in the uh, in the class. So, finite uh, finite volume. If you have a function, I'm only storing the I'm only storing the averages of this function here. only the averages. So finite volume. OK. And uh, I'll just uh, draw a small figure about finite element. If I have an arbitrary function, let's just uh, give it a few uh, small number of elements. It tries to find, for example, if I'm only allowed to give piecewise linear functions, I'm trying to find, OK, this is the best I can do within this element. Maybe this is the best I can do within this element. And this element I'm going to be do pretty horrible because uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it can't be approximated by a linear function. So, so something like that. So this is what finite element is going to do. And uh, we'll learn all these methods and how to approximately solve differential equations using these different methods.